November 2nd, Madison Square Garden, UFC 244, one of the most anticipated fights in MMA history. This man, Jorge Masvidal against Nathan Diaz for the BMF title. How are you, sir? I'm great, Ariel. Often you're dodging me, you're, you're, you're saying that you're going to do my show, you don't show up, you're God, saying you're going to be on camera, you do it on the phone. Now I got you in person, finally. Uh, you know I love you, man. I just, uh, from, from the world itself, I, I stay, you know, isolated from. Yes. But I love you, man. If not, I wouldn't be here, man. I Come appreciate on. that. You know what I can't stop thinking about? As I say, November 2nd, UFC 244. Game. I think about that as well. We'll get to that in a second. You've been doing this... 16 years, 45 pro fights going into this year. How the hell did this happen? Going into this year, going into this year, your last fight, you didn't fight in 2018, so you didn't have a lot of momentum. You know, you were out doing the reality show. Your last fight was at MSG. Yep. Not even close to the main event. Not even close. Lost that fight. Lost that fight. If you would have told me that night, Jorge Masvidal in a year and a half is going to be main eventing MSG in one of the biggest fights of all time, I wouldn't have believed you. Would you have believed you? I, I, uh... That game bird wouldn't have believed you, but that game bird's no longer with us. That guy got buried a long time ago. It's this guy right here, you know? So that guy wouldn't believe you. This guy knows that, that what's going to happen on November 2nd, you know? How'd you get rid of that guy? Uh, we had to catch a body. We had to, he's no longer with us, you know? But something rose better. I just, I just had to Pro, shut down a lot of negative program, a lot of things in my life, and just my my outlook on certain things. You know that had to change, and and with that's come the success that I got now in a lot of ways. You know, also, like you said, I've been doing this for 16 years, so I got a lot of tools people don't know of. I've been sharpening tools a lifetime. You know, I got more than 16 years in the sport. Just 16 years pro, I've been right. doing it amateur for some time too. So it's just literally a lifelong journey for me. You know. When you say negative things, like what? Uh, just any, let's say anything could be negative. Like my pantry was always filled with um, candy because I got kids or not candy, you know, like the snacks and yeah. stuff. Well, snap, no more veggies and fruits for everybody. Then if if I if there's even a temptation of me falling in there, that's not what happens because the pantry's still filled with okay. with snacks. But it's much like life. A lot of those negative things are in the pantry. I I've, I've removed them out of my life. I won't get into too much detail, but there's a lot of things that are that are not part of my life, you know. Okay. So that night, like when you when you lose to Wonder Boy, yeah. do you have like do you recall a moment where you're like, I need to make some changes here because I'm wasting my career? De definitely, I need to make some changes, but do we got time? Because it's absolutely, like a we got time, dog. Okay, if we got time. Well, let's go. You, this guy was telling me before the interview, you better come with the hot stuff. You like I don't usually come. Right, we're gonna warm up. We're, right. we're warming up. You're still in the warm up. Okay, so okay. I get it. Um, well. Some time passed in the fight. You know, obviously I'm heartbroken because I lost the fight. I really wanted to win against Wonder Boy. And uh, I can't get a fight at the time. Also, I got some injuries, so I told my manager, I'm going to nurse some of my injuries that I got, fix up a couple things, and then get back to it. During that process, maybe six months passed by. I'm ready to compete. Let's go. He's telling me, um, okay, let me get you a fight. Some time passes by. He gives me a call, and my manager's really good at uh, trolling. I don't know if everybody knows what this means. So after putting me on numerous trolls, he calls me and I go, hey, what's up? And he goes, hey, man, um, I got this reality sh show for you. I go, awesome. <laughs> I'm not in the mood for the troll today. Right. Some time passes, he calls back. He has the same proposition on the table. I go, but I want to fight. I don't want to be on the real world or none of right. that crap. I want to compete. You know, hey, man, I can't get you a fight right now. Nobody's really wanting to fight, you know. This gig's getting uh, sweeter and sweeter. The more you say no, go there for a couple weeks, see what happens. Ends up being that I go for the show 13 weeks and there's no phone, no radio, no TV. I've said it numerous times, but this is kind of how I, I got to find out exactly what I had to do. It sounds as corny as it may be, but being out from away from everybody just by myself, I got to find me. I got to just listen to my voice, not a million different opinions or some stupid song on the radio or anything. I just got to hear my own voice and and what I want done in my life before I close the chapter on fighting. And these are some of the things that I want done in my life. I'm still nowhere near where I have to get at, but I'm pointing in the right direction. My, my, my mind, body, and spirit is pointed towards the right direction for a long time in my life and my career. So these last four years that I got, it's going to be a roller coaster for everybody watching. I'm going to snatch everybody's soul. Every time I fight, I love people going, <laughs> when I fight, you know, that I just took their breath away. I love that feeling. So... These last four years are gonna be uh they're gonna be they're gonna be something wild, man. So in the end, the reality show almost saved your career. 
save my career, save myself. Not the reality show because I could have found this in. But it helped. God forbid, in jail. You know, right. just just having that that who am I moment, that constantly being with myself, finding out, hearing my voice, making a, a detailed plan of what I'm gonna do with what's left of my career. You know. So even though you 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 saw the light, so to speak, and you had the plan. To see where you're at now, to see the kind of year that you've had. First, the Till fight, which, let's be honest, going into that fight, you know, it was a fight, but we didn't expect this explosion. Then, of course, what happened in July, and now what's happening in November. Is there a part of you that's like, damn, I can't believe it's actually happening? Like, I'm no. finally fulfilling these dreams that I had? No, I'm kind of mad at myself. It took so long. So is my, my good friend and manager, because uh, he knows, you know, that I had the capabilities. And, but I told him at the start of this year, I also told Dan Lambert, Richie Puma, because um, you got to have witnesses, man. I, I just don't be calling stuff in there. Everything I've done this year, I've almost called it to a T. Really? Almost called it to a T. To the few close to me that, that are, have been there, um, general manager for American Top Team, Richie Puma, Dan Lambert, the owner, and my manager, along with my coaches, I've been calling a lot of the plays way before they get done. So they're like, in, and I'm telling them, I'm just like, I, I told you so, you know? So we got big plans for November 2nd, huge plans. So have you called things that we haven't seen? Like, are there other things that you called that we haven't seen come to fruition yet? Yeah, like what? Of them. I'm not a prophet, but man, I, I've been spot on with a couple of things. I can't get into detail or something. My mic gets assassinated. You know? Why? Okay, the higher ups are gonna hear that I got this type of brain power. They're gonna want me killed, man. Okay, but there are other things. Like it doesn't just yeah, end with November second. Yeah, there's a couple 2nd. other things. Oh, there's a couple. Oh, November second is is a gift to the world. Right. <laughs> so you had probably a feeling that Nate was gonna, since you've been foreseeing this um, stuff. I I wasn't sure on the on, on the Nate thing if it was gonna happen, and I thought obviously it's a strong possibility. Nate, for start, is a fighter more than anything. You know, I know he's chasing the money just like me, but that guy wants the fights to get them out of bed or with motivation to hit that heavy bag. I'm that guy, you know? You know why? Not because I'm the funniest or the best looking or nothing. No, it's simply because I'm gonna come to kill you if I have the chance. And anybody fighting me knows that. So if that's not motivating enough, I don't know what is, you know? But that being said, this fight, man, is just, it's, it speaks to me, man. Speaks to your soul. Yeah, right now I'm pretty hyped, man. I could, be, I could go run like five miles or hit the bag right now. I'm pretty like, so where did the change come? Because there was a time where you were getting split decision, split decision, unanimous decision, you were losing the close ones. Mm -hmm. Now you're like, five seconds, don't blink, knocking out Darren Till. Do you feel like you've changed as a fighter as well? Oh, definitely, definitely. You're more aggressive? De not just that, but I like reverse engineered my whole career numerous times, but never in depth like I did this last time when I was in isolation under the stars, just me, God in the universe, and I'd seen every one of my decision losses in my head mm. and went back. How could I have won that decision? I was my first answer. And then I immediately killed that person and thought and said, why the hell would I look for a way to outpoint a guy that should be ending them? Like make a math formula so there's no judges involved. And that's all I've been trying to do and that's all I'm gonna do with what's left of my career. Like you said, I am the poster board for split decisions. I have the most dis split decision losses in the UFC currently right now. It's not something that I'm proud of, but it's true. So taking that into consideration, I had to be like, man, no matter what happens, this is not, I'm not gonna be known for that. Whether I had won those split decisions or lost them, I wouldn't wanna be that guy anyways that I was in such narrow competition. There's a lot of fights I feel I've been robbed terribly in, but it's just like, man, I gotta figure out the formula to execute these guys. Because when great sportsmen, when they're triple teaming a great player, mm -hmm. let's say Michael Jordan, he finds a way to win. He finds a way to get those buckets. So I gotta find a way not to get to decisions. I gotta find a way to eliminate the opposition, separate myself from the pack, baptize these people so they're in outer orbit. And when they come back, there's no questions of who the better man is, you know? And that's, that's all I'm trying to do, separate myself from the pack. So you mentioned something about, you know, when you're at the reality show and you kind of had a chance to speak to yourself, but it could have really been anywhere. Could've you said been. something that kind of stuck with me. You said, it could have been in jail. God could've forbid. Been. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I said the term jail because they remove music, TV, sure, and a lot of things from it. Not that I'm going in that direction. No, 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 I'm no. Not in any way, shape, but or I form. But I think I think a lot of people don't know this. You have spent time in jail. Yeah, I think we youngster. need to talk about that. <laughs> why not? We'll skip that one. I'm just curious. Why did you go to jail? So just being a dumb uh, kid, uh, letting my surroundings maybe, maybe, you know, a lot of a lot of things growing up that. Uh, 
weren't the best decisions. Some of them, you know, I don't regret because it was like uh, maybe I was in fear for my life, you know, type things, okay. and I did certain things. And um, whatever, it's part of my, my journey, my history, right. you know. I'm not encouraging nobody to do any no, no. illegal activities or nothing based off my history. But it's what I had to go through to get here, you know. Feel a little something, so when I get here, I'm un unshakable, unmovable. There's nothing that phases me nowadays, you know. How old were you? Uh, when I what? When you Went were in to jail. Disney World the first time? Or? No, no. The other Disney, the, the the complete opposite. And those are rumors that I went to jail. That's, oh, okay. That might not even be true, man. You don't want to talk about it? Skip. Okay. Um, can I ask about your father? Yeah. He has been to jail as well. Yeah, well, he, he's a very um, strong in instrument in my life and my career. I, I grew up visiting him in the penitentiary since Why a very young age. Why did he go to jail? Uh, for drug charges. Okay. And... His uh, first sentence was 22 years. He did about 18 of those years. So I grew up visiting him in there. In 18 years straight? 18 years straight. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 18 and some change, because then after that, he's, he's not American, so he's Cuban, so he doesn't get deported, so he's in another type of system for like another year. So really, he did a little bit more than that. But through this whole process, I grew up with him. I, I was in this setting. He uh, would tell me things that from that side of the world don't even know, from that dark underground world and how not to get there. And he would just lecture my mind of, once you get here, my son, this is quicksand. You're not gonna do anything in life. You're not gonna get a job. You're not gonna any. So it was very ingrained in me, going in the system, seeing how messed up it is, and then hearing it from him not to end up there. So I, I, I gotta thank my dad, you know, cause if it wasn't for him, who knows, maybe I would have done some of the dumber things in life that, that I said, no, I'm not gonna be a part of it. I'm just gonna spend my Friday nights at the gym and and get better at my technique, and 16 years later, I'm here, man. But when you were getting in trouble, did he get mad at you? Like, was he like, son, I'm disappointed, I tried to tell you, I tried uh, to warn you? Yeah, for a fact, man. Um, it's hard when your dad says always, that, right? Yeah, he's always been like a best friend to me, so him just saying like, just giving me like a head shrug, like, I can remember being young and visiting him, and then he found out I got into some type of trouble, and him just giving me like one of these, it would kill me, you know? Right. He didn't have to hit me, he didn't have to scream at me or nothing. So he definitely helped guide me away from anything negative. And so when he got out after 18 years, has he been cool since? Has he? Has oh, he no, been he's been good. He's a stand-up citizen, man. What does he do now? Um, he works for me. We work together a lot of times. He has a couple other little businesses. But his life, my, my life is like a, a walk in the park compared to his. This, sure. this gentleman really had a for real hard life. He came from Cuba at the age of 14. He stole the, a tire from a tractor, turned it into a raft. Him, his best friend at the time, and his uncle's best friend, None of them were sea merchants or none of that. They just said, we don't want to be told what our favorite color is going to be or what to watch on TV, so they left Cuba. They defected. And, uh, they defected, and they ended up somewhere either in the Bahamas or the Virgin Islands, I forget, and from there they got extracted to the USA. So my dad was 14 at the time, and all he knows is just street life from that time on because right. he was in, in Section 8 housing, project housing. He was in the worst neighborhoods possible with no guidance whatsoever. So his life is something that that was so impactful to me just to hear it like man good thing i don't got to go through all that and you're here to guide me you know that's the reason why i'm here a lot of the times you know he's from cuba your mom's from peru yes man where did they meet they met in miami florida okay and her life may be a little calmer than his uh yeah until he meets yeah. him and then has this oh, you know what and it gets all well, I wasn't, my mom only had one child, and she said, after you, there'd be no more kids ever again coming out of my womb. Just for, the, <laughs> ju this is what she says, just for the fact that one might come out being half of you, you know? Why? I wasn't invited to birthday parties so I was like 14 years old, because I'm wild, what? man. I just have a lot of energy. It's tough for me to sit here this long, you know? Right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really want to, like, get moving and do something, you know? Okay. I was very hyperactive as a kid, beyond over the top, you know? As you could tell, a little bit mischievous, you know? Sure. So, yeah. You were a troublemaker. Yeah. Okay. Since an early age, yeah, uh, an insane amount of energy mi mixed with like bad intentions. Okay. In you school, know. you'd get in trouble as well. Yeah, not always for like fighting and stuff, but I don't know. Maybe I broke something or sure. something crazy, or I disappeared for like a week and then I came back. You know, so I my, I was a handful for my mother. And did she end up having more kids? No. <laughs> One and done, really? One and done. She, wow. She brags about it, you know? I wasn't took into, like, bir like, family birthday parties. I wasn't allowed to, like, 13, 14 years old. So they thought I was civilized enough to get reintegrated in the group again. Wow. You know? Yeah. So you were really excluded from everyone? A little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wild. Yeah. 14? 
I would think like, maybe like, like 12, four or five. 13, they started already letting yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. From like the period of like six to like, I don't know how long, there was like, yo, we, you got to control that animal when you bring him around, you know? Are, are, are your parents still together? No, no, they, they haven't been together for ages. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened? Just kind of. Well, I mean, just imagine, just an 18 year trial, I think, was, was long enough. I don't know how. They were married at the time. They were married at okay. the time when, when uh, he went in. I don't know how in love they were with each other or not at the, at the moment because there's different sides to the sure, story. Sure, sure. But um, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it would have lasted if he had not gotten in there or not. I have no idea. Are you close with your mom now? We're cool. We're, we're super cool. Because I know you're very close to your dad. Yeah, my pops is like my best friend. Me and my mom's is super cool. Um, but my pops is like my, my, my best friend. So you see him a lot with me. But I got a lot of love and admiration for my mom. She busted her butt to get me where I'm at numerous times. She was working. She had a full-time job at this dollar rental car place. And she had a part-time job. Then at night, I remember she used to pack up like uh, necklaces. Okay. Like she'd make necklaces all night long. And I would wake up like at two in the morning as a kid and see her working. And I'd be like, man, she just left to work, came back from work. And is still working right now to make ends meet. And those type of visuals installed a work ethic that you could go to the greatest gym in the world, American Top Team, and ask any of the coaches there who's got the best work ethic or one of the best work ethics, and they'll tell you that's me, man. I don't, I don't, I don't pull that knee off because I'm just so talented. No, I, I rep that knee more than any human being walking this earth. I'm in there every day getting after my repetitions, my running, my sprints, my swimming, whatever it is that I got to do, I'm out working everybody in that room. And a big part of that is because of my mother, the work ethic that I saw that she had it was insane to me, you know, and, and I was at a young age and this impacted me, you know, so that's how, that's how strong of a work ethic that immigrant mentality they say now, it's like trendy to say, but it, it's true, you know, she came over with a work drive and then when my dad went away, she had to turn it up even more, you know. When you're going through sort of that uncertainty with your dad away and, and you get into fighting around 14, right? That's when you start dabbling with it? Uh, yeah, like 13, 14 years old, I already start um, trying to train at places. I, I started training since young, maybe like four or five years old. My dad uh, tells me, but my mom used to, uh, it was a conflict of interest. My dad was like, yes, put him in there. He could burn the nervous energy, all that craziness he has. We'll stick him in there two, three hours a day. He's going to come back a better human being. My mom's like, you're going to make him more aggressive. This is going to make him worse. So it was always like that turbulence. If I do bad in school, they'd, they'd take me out of the sport. Now I was really like, ah, ah I, I, I needed that outlet. And that was my outlet. That was as crazy as it sounds um, growing up, especially the gym where people are trying to rip your head off was right. my safe zone. Always, man. It was, if I had a bad day, if I just, if I didn't get to eat for whatever reason, if anything happened, if I go to the gym, that was my safe zone. So I, I've always uh, looked at the gym as like my temple, you know, like my place of peace. As crazy and as weird as that sounds. What kind of house did you grow up in? Um, well, I grew up in different houses, many apartments, houses, everywhere, man. I lived in many places. Well, why'd you move around so much? Uh, Good question. <laughs> I don't know, but we moved around a lot, you know. I've was uh, it ever in like some tough places where? Yeah, yeah, I've been I've been in some good places. I've been in some rougher places. Man, I slept in my car for like four or five months before I got a couple pro fights. Really? Had some cash. Used slept that. in your car. Yeah, yeah. Slept in the car in the parking lot. Slept at gyms for a long time under the ring. Um, under the ring. Yeah, yeah. For a while too, you know, for like a good two months, and then uh, bouncing from couch to couch and. Well, I was able to afford a car because I want to fight. I got another place to sleep and, and I got AC. I'm set, you know. That's the type of individual I am. I, I didn't let nothing stop me since a young age. I didn't care if I had a house or if I had the right gear or not. I just make it to the gym because it was my safe zone. It didn't, it didn't matter where I slept. It didn't matter what I was doing. If I could just get to the gym and space off those three, four hours, I was like a kid all over again, you know. And I've done that throughout my whole life. And it happens to pay off now, you know? When you're sleeping in your car, when you're essentially homeless, are people trying to mess with you? Because you're out at, like, you're, you're, you're in the middle of nowhere sleeping? Maybe, maybe like one or two instances. I always you? park somewhere safe. Okay. Um, you ever have any situations where someone tried to rob you, come up on you? Uh, this one car that I was in, they tried to tow it while I was in the car. So wow. I just literally hear, like, click, click, and I think I'm getting robbed, and they're, like, hooking all the things up. They didn't see me in the back sleeping through the tents. So I got out of the car, obviously, yeah. Ready to kill somebody, and they're like, "Whoa, snap! Sorry about that," you know. <laughs> and they unhook the car and stuff, you know. But that—that—that's about it, you know. When you're in these moments, you're not thinking to yourself, "Like, man, wh like, what is this going to lead to? At some point, am I ever going to break through here?" 
Or am I just going to be the guy who's jumping from place to place, living from place to place? Like at some point you want to make, you want to be a prize fighter, right? You ever have moments of doubt where you're like, maybe I just took the wrong path. This isn't going to mm. lead to anything, any money? Uh, th there's a couple of those split decision losses, those losses where I go, wow, damn, this, this hurts, man. I, I put in so much into this, my whole life into this, into this camp, into this actual fight. And, and then you hear something like 30, one judge, 27 for him, then the other judge is 30, 27 for me, and then the other judge is 29, 28 for him. Yeah. So it leaves you like lopsided. Then you go online and you go, man, Ariel said I won the fight. So-and-so said I won the fight. The whole press online says I win the fight. And it puts you in those weird things, you know, and you could go many different routes. The world is against me, or I, I had an affair with somebody's daughter that's a judge and now they freaking hate me. You could, you could do all these things. And you gotta kind of be a little cheesy and be like, man, I gotta find the most positive way and the least resistance to my success, you know? And that was just end these guys. I just gotta finish them. I'm gonna get better. I kept telling myself, I know I could do this. I'm gonna get better. It's just a matter of time before everything falls into place. You know, still everything hasn't fallen into place yet, but it will soon. Have you ever been back to Cuba with your dad? No, no, haven't been. I mean, he's not really, like, he, he couldn't go and come back. He can't leave oh, the country. Because he defected? N no, that too, but also he's, uh, um, like in the U.S., they don't deport Cubans because uh, we have that embargo treatment, you know. Sometimes they still do, but he can't leave the country and then come back into the USA. If he leaves, he has to stay gone. Okay. You know, yeah. When, 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 you, when you see Nate, do you see yourself in him? In some aspects, yeah. I see another Latin kid that, man, this was his way out, you know, the way to, to generate money, to generate income and not do nothing crazy, you know. Maybe uh, we come from similar neighborhoods or upbringing, you know. So you can, you can see that trauma when he fights that he's willing to push through the pain, the fatigue like a dog. It's, it's, it doesn't matter to him, you know. When you were coming up, was that a fight that you were like, man, or maybe even his brother? Because it feels like it was his brother for the longest time. You're like, um, these well, are the kinds of guys that I want to test myself again. I respect these guys. Yeah. Either either one of them. You know, I, I fought Melendez a long time yes. ago. So I knew about all these guys. Uh, obviously, uh, Nick was fighting with me at Strike Force. He was a 70-pound champ. I was at 155. Nate was at uh, 55, but in the UFC. Then when I came over, Nate went up and then... You know, as I yeah, went up, yeah. he went down, and it was kind of weird. So I didn't really think that uh, that those fights were going to materialize with the Diaz brothers, but I always wanted them because I just knew, like, man, the day we fight, it's going to be a fight, man. It's going to be somebody that the fans are going to remember. People will remember that day in their, cal in their calendar. They'll mark it down. If you're an MMA fan, you're going to know about that day because you're getting what you want, a, a fight. You know, guys that ain't going to quit, that are going to give it their all, push themselves to the, to the brink. I'm sorry for harping on this, but I can't get over it. Your journey is so unexpected in the sense that in the fight game, if you've been fighting for 16 years, especially if you consider boxing, let's be honest, double digit losses, not all of them were deserved, but that's what it is. It doesn't happen this late where you just explode. Like now here you are, you're a mainstream star. I see you with Lebetard, I see you on Get Up. Like you are a mainstream star. It doesn't usually happen this way. Like you could have been easily the guy who got submitted by Toby Yamada in one of the craziest submissions. Like that could have been you, right? That could have been your legacy. Oh, what happened to Jorge Masvidal? Remember the guy who got submitted? And you have somehow overcome all of that. Yeah. It's amazing. Like yeah. the, I, I would imagine there, there was a period where you were like, is that gonna be me, right? No, nah, it wasn't, you know. You never I, thought that? You never worried nah, about that? No, I, I knew for a fact, you know, I knew for a fact without, it, life had hit me so much harder than anything you've seen on my pro career. Life at the age of like 12, 13 years old had hit me way harder, choked me out way harder than anything I had come in contact with in the sports world. So I was like, it's just a matter of time. I'm going to bounce back from this. I'm going to take that guy's head off and whoever else they put in front of me. And slowly but surely, I've been, I've been getting to that, you know? When's the last time you saw that amount of submission? Ooh, maybe... I don't know, like a year or two ago. I remember uh, seeing it. it was just up on, on a highlight somewhere, and I saw it, and I just looked at it, and it took me back to those memories. Like, damn, you know, I didn't want to tap. I remember feeling it, and I was like, no, nah, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get out. <laughs> Embarrassed when you watch it? Embarrassed, and at the same time, I hold a, a, a badge of honor for myself because I know I was close to going out, but the fighter in me, the, that, that, like I say, that dog in me, was like, no, nah, we're gonna find a way out of here. I didn't find a way out of that night. That was the first time I was actually in a submission like that. I, I didn't do none of it. You better believe after that day, 
I got the best guys at doing that submission because I didn't even know you could get submitted from that position. And man, we drilled it and drilled it and drilled it to the point where if Toby started in that position, I'd feel comfortable to get out, you know? Right. And uh, it's just the character that I am. I'm kind of like a sociopath with, with, with these things. Like I just emerge myself in it and and just torment myself till I get good at it, you know? I feel like, so you said that like you're, you're, you're antsy, you've got a lot of energy, you're, you're fired up, but I feel like you're also somewhat at peace because all this good is happening to you. Witness the fact, I saw a photo of you and Michael Bisping, who I thought would never see eye to eye, hanging out chummy. Yeah, yeah. How did you bury the hatchet? Um, well, Mike, uh, to me, you know, Mike seems something like small, but he went above and beyond when uh, I was in my fight for Till. Literally, we were in a real tight hallway and he had to go this way and I had to go that way. And I was ready for anything, you know. I don't know if this guy's gonna come fight me. I don't know if he's just gonna say an exchange of words. I didn't know what he was gonna do. And all he did is he came up to me, said, what's up, George? And he kept walking. This was like a day or two before my fight. Not that he could have thrown me off course, mm -hmm. but him not trying to throw me off course showed me a lot of, a lot of respect for him. Like I just, you know, besides obviously he's a great fighter and stuff, you know, it just showed me like, man, this, uh, this dude's a real cool individual because he could have tried to destroy my mindset. And I'm fighting this country, man, you know? And he didn't. And I thought that was real cool. I thought that was from the heart, you know? So, yeah. So the hatchet has been buried. Yeah, yeah. You're after that, good. we were able to talk and express our ch each other's uh, things. And we had a couple similarities and stuff. So that's oh, really? also why we kind of butted, you know? So, I, so like, th that warms my heart. I was actually listening. You were in studio on my show back in 2016. I don't know if you remember. You were here to watch the uh, NCAA wrestling tournament. Mm -hmm. And we actually talked a lot. I just listened to the interview again just to mm -hmm. remind me of what we talked about. We talked a lot about your roommate, your friend. And, and the Bisping photo makes me think that this makes me sad that you and Colby are beefing. This makes me sad. Uh, you guys were boys. You spoke so highly of him in that interview. I don't know if you remember, but going to Taco Bell late at night. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we uh, me and this individual shared a lot of memories, you know. Yeah. Um, you guys were real friends. Train, tra at some point, I would have considered us real friends. Knowing that that uh, he'd take to the internet or online to, to bash me when I had never bashed him and he just took to bashing it, whether it be for a Facebook like or or maybe he's gonna get 10 more pay-per-view buys when we do fight. If you would sell out our friendship like that so quick, we never had a friendship. You know, it was all fake. I thought we had a friendship, hmm. but I could see from your end to mine, we were never cool, man. You were just using me or whatever the hell, you know, sleeping on my couch. I obviously, you already knew who I was. So how would I get Kobe on your show? I'd tell you about my boy Kobe. I'd do it with uh, other radio shows, you know? So I just feel like, man, this dude's a punk, you know? And then um, to really put the nail in the coffin, ripped off my coach. Didn't, didn't pay money. My coach was training him since he's an amateur all the way till he got his title with RDA. And then after that, just ripped him off. When that happened, he died to me, you know? So I really don't like to address him in interviews because nobody the F knows who he is, especially if they're watching me. They're, they want to see pure violence. They don't want to see pure hugging, you know? So none of my fans really know who this dude is, you know? So that'll be the, the first and last time we address that peasant on this show, man. But I, I thought we were friends. We, we never were, you know? If you were, if, if, if for a couple dollars, you would throw my name under the bus or try to say things, we were never cool, you know? I'm just because I spoke to Dustin on Monday and he didn't want, really want to talk about him either. Because I said, like, what would happen if you see him at the gym? And he's like, you'll read about it. And that was pretty much it. Mm -hmm. I don't foresee any sort of scenario where he could be allowed in the gym. Like, how, how this is going to tear the gym apart, right? If you and Dustin, two guys who are so respected, isn't that going to well, be a problem? Well, you're, you're even skipping the gun before you get to me and Dustin. Why was this guy ever bad mouthing Amanda? You know, one mm. of the greatest fighters ever. She's a chick. You know, like, you, you, you don't have no respect for yourself, man. And once he started doing this gimmick, we already started s separating ways. Like, okay. like, the whole hanging out with girls, he doesn't get girls like that, one. Two, when has it become so cool to kiss and tell? Like, he, he's talking about who he's having affairs with and this and that, and then talking bad about women. Like, man, I met this guy's father. He actually has a dad, man. I, I'm surprised he acts this way, you know, like a, like a punk, literally, just to get a reaction, just to get this, people talking about him. I can't, um... I can't see eye to eye. I don't, I don't care for that because I know who he is in real life. He's not this, uh, this character he's trying to be in, in real life, that he's a sex symbol or that he doesn't have no feelings or nothing. He's actually quite the opposite, you know? So it's crazy to see what people will do literally for the dollar they will sell their soul. And that's part of the reason also it's taken me so long to get here. I've never changed. I've, I've continued to be true to myself. You know that I'm the same person you interviewed 10, mm -hmm. 15 years ago. I'm gonna continue to be that person. If they like me, cool. If they don't, 
It is what it is, man, you know, but I ain't selling my soul for the dollar, man. If you win on November 2nd, life is no, going no, to no, change. No, 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 When you win, my, my apologies. When you win on November 2nd, life is going to Don't change. Don't mess up again, Andrew. Uh, but has life changed already? Like, do you feel a dramatically. difference? How so? Life, life changed dramatically, man. Um, snap, I, I heard the saying before that you're last considered a prophet in your own city. Is it something like that, that okay. they, they say? That's when I really noticed when my own city took, like, a general consensus of me, you know? Yeah. Like I said, I've been fighting forever, and it's never been like a big, big thing over there where I can't go out. Now it's like where I can't go out, you know? And it's in my own city, so that's when I knew, like, wow. I, People come I up guess. to you, want to take pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's you always happening like in, in California and New York a lot more. Like, if I'm just here randomly, I get a lot more... Um, I, I guess people are more, way more educated in MMA in New York, let's say, in yeah. California. Or they just get the trends first, you know, because it's, it's uh, in, in Miami, I've never felt that boom, like how it is now. And that's how I knew, like, man, I must have gone to the next tier up, you know? Well, one thing, it sounds silly, but one thing that I really think helped maybe connect you with the people of Miami is when you said super necessary in that press conference. It's a crazy oh, thing that this has blown I up. I don't know why that's super necessary. I didn't know that super necessary was so Miami. I didn't. You didn't know that? Because afterwards, it seems like everyone's like, oh, he's our guy. He said super necessary. And I heard the other one was irregardless that everyone says over there, a, a word that doesn't really make sense. But people <laughs> say, do you say irregardless? I don't, I'm sure, man, maybe in the heat of moment, I do, you know, the super necessary. I mean, I guess people do say that. I don't, I don't know. But you know that blew up, right? Like, that's what the guys on Levitard... Well, you know, I don't know on the TV. I, I know, I know. I mean, get on the social media much. So I don't know what blows up or doesn't. I just do my thing. And then later on, they're like, hey, good job. I'm like, all right, cool, you know? So One little word. It, did it, yeah, super, like the, the three pieces in the soda, you yeah. know? I just, I never would have thought it was going to blow up like that, you know, but whatever. It's a crazy thing, because now I feel like they view you as their guy, 305. Like That's you, what I'm saying, you know, now. Right, now. Yeah. Where, what were they waiting for? They yeah. should have been the first ones there. So is there a, par is a party that's like, yo, you guys are Johnny Come Lately's? Now you're going to show me love after 16 Johnny years? Come <laughs> right. <laughs> is there a part of you that's like, where were you guys back in the day when I was fighting for shark fights? My boy said it, not me. Yeah. You feel that way? Of course, you know? Yeah. I mean, just think about it like from exposure side. Like, if I was able, if, if the UFC thought, like, wow, we could get the Miami market with this guy, the UFC would have been pushing me earlier. Right. So there is that part of me of, uh, gosh, I wish it would have got behind me sooner. But at the same time, man, God aligns the stars up for a reason, you know, and God's yeah. timing's perfect. So he wanted it now, you know, so now it is. How much are we making for this fight? We're making. Good? We're making some people are going to be, not some people. A lot of people are going to be mad when they see this. And I, and I would rather much say a lot of people are going to be happy. Yeah. But seeing how a lot of my coworkers have already been taken to, to the stuff, when they actually find out these numbers. What, are we talking seven figures? Big numbers? Most ever in your career? <laughs> That's not fair, man. And then you can't even say nothing, because when you look at my resume, what I've been doing, how sure. long I've been doing, not just to forget about the UFC, before coming to the UFC, you know, because you've been covering yeah, the sport yeah. for ages. Man, I deserve these paychecks and then some. A long time ago. A long time ago, my so brother. You're making it for long, lost so time. On November second, not only am I charging for all this year's work, but it's compound interest, man. It's it's been building up for a long time. I'm this credit card company is coming to collect, man. And man, I got some interest rates to to apply, and I'm not somebody you want to owe money to. And you get pay per view points, first time. It's finally coming together. This guy knows too much. That's great. <laughs> yes, sir. Finally. Whew. It's 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 awesome to be here, you know, to 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 look at that mountain peak and be like, I know I could climb and push yourself, get to the top, look down and be like, look at all that I did. But I'm looking even higher, man. I got some big, big plans, man. I got some huge plans. I know you're fighting for this fictitious title, but fictitious. Well, I'm just the company I'm, I'm, in all it's running has never had yes. a bad mother effort title. All I'm it just can't be coincidence that I'm one of the people competing for it. This title is the hardest title out walking the planet, man. They picked two dogs, and that's for a reason. It, in the history of this company, have you heard them put up a title no. like that before? Why do you think so, man? Why do you think because so, Because it's well-deserved. But I'm wondering if in those plans, there's a real belt in those plans. Like, will it feel like you fell short if you don't get the actual title at some point, or do you not care about that? You want me blunt, honest with you? Please. I want to take every, everybody's head that's in the top 10. I want to take their head and their soul with it, man. 
And if they have some Mickey Mouse title with their waist, I'm going to take that too. I just see my, maybe when I look at other divisions, I could see talent, I could see skill set. But when I look at my division, I just see like, I got my work cut out for me, but every single one of these guys, I'm going to baptize them, man. I'm just going to separate myself from the pack in, in as much as way, shape, and form as possible. So if there's somebody going out there spreading rumors that they have a belt worth getting for, I'm coming for you. That's it. There's nothing more to it. I'm coming for your head. And I don't like the he say, she say. We're going to find out the only way that there is, and that's fighting, you know? So whatever they end up doing with the sissy fighting belt championships on that side, I don't know. But that bad motherfucker belt, that's going to be mine, man. And after that, I'm going to defend it against whoever they deem to defend it against. Last one. Who's the A side on November 2nd? You or Nate? You're looking at the A side. You're looking at the A, the alpha, the... The everything, man. The alpha and the omega is right here in front of you, baby. Why would you ask such questions, man? I, I you know like, the answer to I that. I feel like he would have a different answer. You know the answer to that. Well, we'll see November 2nd who was the alpha. I can't wait. Thank you, my man. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Yes, November sir. 2nd, Madison Square Garden, UFC 244. Jorge Masvidal, Nathan Diaz for the BMF title. Hello everyone, it's Ariel Hawani. I just came here to thank you for watching our ESPN YouTube channel. It's the best. You know what else is the best? The ESPN app. You can get highlights, analysis, all that stuff and more. And if you want premium content and live streaming sports, there's only one place for all of that. It's ESPN+. Plus.